Welcome back to the introduction to Matinee. In this video, we are going to wrap up our cinematic sequence by finding some way to make it trigger. Now, this isn't the kind of thing that we can take lightly. It's actually a very important thing we need to focus upon because if we take a look at our cinematic sequence, well, currently we have nothing making it play. No. And if we're not really careful, we'll end up playing it at the wrong time or maybe playing it every single time that our player goes through the door. Oh, come on. That would be the most annoying door in the world. Every yeah. time you open it, you get to see yourself standing there and cameras moving around? Come on. No, we definitely don't want that. And there are other considerations as well. We need to take away the player's ability to actually do anything in the game before we go much further. So all kinds of stuff we need to consider. Yeah, I guess that would be bad if we handed off control to the camera and we're watching ourselves stand there in the door and then we watch ourselves run off. Well, yeah, what if you ended up like jumping to a movie that took place next to a cliff or something and your player <laughs> fell off? Well, you get the idea. Yeah. All right, so this is going to involve our door sequence in some way because we want this cinematic sequence to fire when the door is open and when our player is standing in the middle of the door. But we want it to fire when the door sequence takes place for the time being, but we don't want this as part of the door sequence because it's not part of the door sequence. Right. It's a cinematic sequence. It's something different. That's right. It's its own thing. Now, before I jump into the door sequence and carry on from here, there is one thing that's been bugging me very subtly throughout this <laughs> you entire series. You don't like that name, do you? The name Interp Actor 7 is <laughs> driving me crazy. So I'm going to right-click on that sequence, and we're going to rename it to lift sequence. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, this was planned to show you that you can rename these later. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just forgot for a lot of videos. That's right. So uh, let's go into our door sequence. And when our door is open, we can start simple. We want to find some way to make the door open trigger this cinematic sequence. That's and right. There's now, a of course, we could bring that in here. We could. But we don't want to do that. No, we want to be able to uh, selectively pull it out so we can find it easily later and edit it. Right now, this is called the door sequence. Subsequence. You don't want to dig into a door sequence in order to find the cinematic sequence. That's right. So to, in order to keep these separate but still make them able to talk to one another, we need to employ the activate remote event action. So I'm going to right-click on my log. We're going to expose the output. And let's right-click over here in space, create a new action. And under the event menu, we have activate remote event. And I'm just going to connect this right over. Now, if we take a look at the Activate Remote Event Properties, we have an event name currently set to default, uh, default event. That's no good. We're going to call this Start uh, Cinematic Sequence, which is kind of a long name, but at least it makes sense. So we're starting the cinematic sequence. It also isn't a bad idea in general to go ahead and drop this into the object comment so that uh, if you ever pop your head in here, you can see this. Right, and you'll know what it's for. That's right. So we're done here. Let's go ahead and get out, of, uh, out back into our main sequence. Now, the cool thing about using the activate remote event is that now we can right-click over here and create a new event. New, you guessed it, remote event. Ta-da! Okay, so now we need to uh, add an event name here, which we chose Start Cinematic Sequence, which is hiding behind a tooltip now. I hope I'm spelling it right. Or you can just hit paste. And there we go. Oh, I could have hit paste, <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. no fun. See, actually, I like typing it in in lowercase to see if the case jumps up. Yeah, because you know that pesky Windows operating system, how it can just jumble up those characters on the clipboard. It just makes me feel good, okay? <laughs> I understand. And that's what it's all about. It's all about me. Okay, so uh, let's just start off simple. We're okay. going to take our remote event and hit play. Okay. And let's close out of here and give this a quick test. So I'll uh, right-click here on the floor, play from here. And let this load for a moment. So cool. We come in here, open up the door, and whoa. Hey, hey, wh where'd you go? Yeah, where did I go? Because I can still run, and now I'm lost. I, I completely ran out of the frame. Yeah, You're in the corner. Hiding in the corner now. Okay, so let's, let's go back through the door. And there we go. Okay, so some things that need, hey, no riding the lift, okay? I wanted to plan the lift. No, it's time to work. Okay. So some things we need to take care of. The idea that you can go running off is probably not good. Yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of a problem. Now, a quick thing, you'll notice when we went back through the door, the sequence didn't fire again. That is because currently our remote event's max trigger count is set to uh, 1. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to set this to zero. Just to prove the point. Just to prove the point. Uh, you would want to leave this set to 1, or at least you will at first. Uh, because when we first go through the door, boom. All right, now we're moving, shaking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. And great. That was awesome. And now we come in here and oh, oh, check it out. I don't know if this can actually pick it up thinking about it. Zach, they might not be they able to see it. They might not even see it. There's just a little flicker There's that keeps popping up. flicker. That is all. 
our cinematic sequence is at the end. Right, it never had a chance to rewind. That's right, we never rewound it. So since it's at the end, it's, it's it. That's done. It's that completed. Well, so there's nothing to run through with the whole thing. We could do rewind if already playing. <laughs> or no, rewind on play. <laughs> Let's activate that property. I just I want to show this. It'll be fun. So boom. Now we come in. And now the funny thing about this is every time we go through the door, we're going to get this. Da, 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 da. We're dancing. Pink. And then now the next time we come through the door. Oh, no. Now we're dancing some more. But if you don't have that turned on, then you're just going to get a flicker. And, again, it might be really difficult to see the flicker. I didn't think about that. It's so fast that yeah, on the capture, with, you don't with us only capturing 10 frames per second, you probably wouldn't be able to see now, it. I'm going to turn that off. I was just using that to prove a point. But that's definitely something that needs to be fixed. Right now, the quick way of fixing this is just by taking that max trigger count and setting it to 1, as it was initially set. That's right. But this is, that's only half of the problem, because I would like some way to control when this is going to happen. I would like some sort of in-game event to uh, to actually control whether or not the cinematic sequence even, will play at all. Even before we get to that, I'd like to see you locked down to a single position where you can't go running around. Okay, that's fair. And that's really easy to do. There's uh, actually the ability to toggle on cinematic mode. And cinematic mode allows you the ability to remove control from the player. So let me break this connection. And one of the first things we'll do when this remote event is fired is we will toggle. So I'll go to new action, toggle, and we'll toggle cinematic mode like so. So let's go from out to enable, and then from out here into play. Let's take a look at some of the properties on cinematic mode. So we have the ability to disable input, disable movement, mm -hmm. disable turning. I'll switch that off so we can still turn the player around if we want to. Uh, hide the HUD. Hide the player. Ooh, we don't want to do that. We want to see the player. Yeah. He's the star of the show. And that's and about regular it. regular type stuff, yeah. Now, that's only half of this. Uh, creating is only one thing. We need a target. We need to say to this node, I want you to affect the player and keep him from moving. So let's right-click over here in just a, a blank space. We'll create a new variable, new object, and player. And let's just connect this right to the target like so. Very good. So now we're talking directly to the player. And we can test this out. Let's uh, jump in and give a quick try. Because we have a new problem. Yeah. So here this we go. is a fun one. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Looking. So you can turn. Can you walk forwards? No, I can't move. I can't do anything. Now check this out. Wait, wait. Now, try to walk forwards. Notice I have no HUD either. <laughs> We're stuck in yeah. cinematic mode. That, something tells me, is not good. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a problem. So we need some way to switch that off. Now, and disable it. Here's the thing. If you are under the impression that you could just connect this back around, that would be bad because that'll keep cycling trying to play the cinematic sequence. And you're talking about to flip it back around to disable it. You wouldn't want to connect this over like so. No. Because then you're just going to run into a cycle. So uh, well, It'll actually play. But you'll get that flicker again because yeah. it's at the end. So yep. that's, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, it's not okay. something you want to do. Oh, it's a lot of overhead, too. So let's hit Control-C and Control-V, and we'll make a new toggle cinematic mode. And we'll, from completed, we'll set this to disable, and oh. this will hand control back over to us. So now let's test this out. Make sure we get a HUD back up and that you can run away. All right, so here we are in the doorway. Look around. We're facing the wrong direction. I actually yeah. wanted this in reverse. <laughs> And now can you walk? There you go. So now we're all standing, set. and let's walk through the door. And no flicker. No flicker. And it's not, there we go. So everything is good, except that I don't like the way this is uh, this is going. In that um, I I want to have a direct control, something that takes place in the game that will determine whether or not the cinematic sequence plays when we go through the door. Yeah, that makes sense. So maybe he accomplished some sort of specific task. And by accomplishing that task, now if he goes through that door, we get this cinematic movie. That's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trigger here on the floor. So let's go to Add Actor, Add Trigger. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up its properties. We'll go ahead and collapse the properties there. And I'll Jump up under Display, and we'll make sure Be Hidden is turned off so that we can see this actor in the level when we're playing. Now, just as a side note, this is a proof of concept uh, approach. In general, you wouldn't want to use a trigger in the game. <laughs> You'd want to have some sort of a mesh that you could go use. Well, Remember, what I said is yeah. we wanted to set something up where the character completed some task, and then when they run back through this door, wow, a movie starts up. Well, in this particular case, the task is flipping the switch. Flip a switch, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> so now let's pop back over here into Kismet, and I'm going to go right up here above our remote event, right-click. We'll create a new event using Trigger 6, and that will be a used trigger. 
So, ta-da, like so. And uh, let's see, from here, what do we need to do? Yeah, this is where you really have to stop and think about the logic of what needs to take place. Because we already know this remote event is going to be triggered because of the door opening back up in the door sequence. Well, that's good. But now that's going to simply send the pulse over to toggle our cinematic mode and then begin the cinematic sequence. That's right. But... We don't want the cinematic sequence to begin. We don't want that remote event to start everything if the player has yet to hit that trigger that we just put in. That's right. And in general, whenever you're stuck like this and you don't really know where to go, try to say in English what you want. You want to know whether or not you need to start the cinematic sequence. And think about that statement, whether or not. Ooh, yes like or a, no. Sounds like a comparison. Zach. That's right. It's a comparison. And it's a yes or no answer, which means it's a Boolean. That's Only right. one of two options. So the first thing I'm going to do here at our remote event, I'm going to break our little connection. I'm going to right-click and create a new comparison or a new condition, comparison, compare bool. So a Boolean is always going to check a Boolean value, which, again, is like yes or no, true or false, one or zero. So as soon as this remote event fires, we'll plug this in. What? No comparison note that says something like, shall we play the movie? Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Should we play the movie? All right. And that just always makes me feel good. So, so true means enable. Yeah. If, we, if the answer is true, then let's go to enable. If the answer is false, do nothing. And by default, it should be false. Yeah. Because when we first start off inside the level, we, being the player, have not yet accomplished this task, which is pressing that trigger. That's right. Okay. Now, what we need to do from here is set up the variable that will store the answer to the question. So let's right-click, create new bool variable. And, and there it is. There false. you go. At first, the answer is false, which is the default value. Now what we want to do is set up the condition by which, if we have used the trigger, we change the answer to this question to yes. That's right. So let's right-click over here, create a new action, and we'll grab a set variable, bool, and we'll just connect this right in. And uh, notice the max trigger count on this guy is set to 1. That's going to become important here in just a second, and I'll, I'll show you why as we get into this. But uh, let's take the target, and we'll connect it down here to this variable and make sure that our default value is currently set to true. So that we are indeed sending out a true pulse to be stored over there in that variable. That's right. So uh, as soon as we uh, use the trigger, we, that will set this guy to true, and then it'll, the next time we go through the door, we'll say, should we play the movie? The answer is true, and it'll fire off cinematic mode. But you just said the next time. Right now, that remote event can be triggered how many times? Just once. Mm -hmm. So if we've already gone through the door, this whole sequence is irrelevant, and that can be a really confusing thing to try to lock down. So let's go ahead and take our max trigger count on our remote event and set that to zero, because this is going to be triggered every time we go through the door. It's just we're going to uh, end up getting a lot of falses. That's right. All right, now one other thing I want to do, and this is just to make sure that everybody is simpatico, is we're going to uh, take our object comment for the trigger, and we will say uh, something like uh, cinematic sequence enabled, enabled uh, with an exclamation point. And then uh, up here on the properties, we're going to output that object comment to the screen just for debugging purposes. Okay. Now we're almost done. We really only have one problem left. And that is that this answer is going to remain true for the rest of the game. But, Zach, if it remains true, and we've taken that remote event and we set its max trigger count down to zero, that means we can still keep hitting it. And since it's true, we're going to keep enabling cinematic mode, which is being sent over to cinematic sequence. We're going to start getting that flicker again. That's right. So what we need to do is take this little Boolean uh, set operation. I'm going to hit Control-C. Let's fly over here and hit Control-V. And it's already connected to the variable I need it to be. So we can just plug it in like so. Now, here's just a quick thing. You notice i got all these wires kind of wrapping over. Over each other. I mean, you might not, you're like, where does this guy go? We have to track it all the way back over here. I'm going to show you something. We're going to take our little false Boolean uh, here, and we're going to give him a variable name. I'm going to call him movie status. There you go. Notice it's red. It's not blue like an object comment. Now, just for the sake of fanciness, I'm going to come up here and disconnect our little Boolean operation up here. I'm going to bring in a new kind of variable called a named variable. So let's right-click, new variable, named variable. And what this guy does is he will talk to a variable through a remote link by calling him by name. So we'll take the uh, name movie status, press enter, and there you go. Now, you won't see this guy update. You're going to see the red X, which says it doesn't know who it's talking to just yet. Don't worry about that. It, it, we need to update Kismet before that will actually become true. Now I'm going to take movie status, hit Control-C, 
pop over here to our little bool and hit control V. Now this time notice he's got a green checkbox. That means that he does see who he's supposed to be talking to. We can break the link here and connect here. So now we're connecting to this guy remotely. It's just a way to make things nice and clean. Sure. But that's really all it is. Let's go back in the bool real quick. Go ahead and select on that. And right now we're sending a true value back over. We need to uncheck default value so that it is a false value that will end up getting stored back into that bool variable. That's right. And all we're doing is when the movie is done playing, we're resetting that value so that the next time we say, should we play the movie, the answer is going to be no That's one right. more time. So let's give this a quick test. Uh, logically, I think everything should be working. So let's give it a quick play. Let's try running through the door two or three times. So there's one. door looks good. Nice. Two. Yeah, just because I can. Let's go hit the lights. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so things are looking good over here. I'll turn the lights back on. Because <laughs> we can. And now let's go over here and use this trigger and take, take a close look at our log. Cinematic sequence enabled. So now the next time we pop through here. <gasps> oh. Check it out. So far, so good. Da -da -da. And fade. And do you have control? I have control. Outstanding. Things are looking good. Now let's go back through the door. Outstanding. No Just flicker and everything's looking really good. Now, notice I can't use this trigger anymore. That's right. completely defunct. I can still come over here and turn the lights off if I want to. Yep. And you can still pass through the door. Yeah. No problem. No flicker. No sequence playing of a movie. That's right. That's exactly what we were looking for. So that wraps up everything. I yeah. Mean, that, we, we've covered everything I wanted to show you guys in matinee. In regards to an introduction to matinee. That's right. There's so, a lot of things that you guys can explore. So I encourage you to go out there, start playing with the different tracks, and start playing with the different ways that you can configure Kismat and matinee sequences to work together. Absolutely. You're going to find that you're really only limited by your imagination. So go out there and play with everything you can and really get used to this awesome, very powerful system within Unreal Engine 3. And that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.